What's going on everybody? Greg Peters with the Car Passion channel here. And as you can see behind me, the parts pile is starting to grow so large, it has now come into the frame. I think I have enough parts here to build a Miata that can travel time. But anyways, that's for future videos. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to custom build a tool in order to check how well the valves are sealing inside the cylinder head. Now, whether you have the head removed because you're doing a head gasket and you just wanna check up on the health of things, or like me, you're planning on lapping the valves in yourself and I don't really trust myself. So I wanna build a tool that can help me double check my work and ensure that the valves are sealing properly before I reassemble the engine. Now, this video is heavily inspired by Jaffro Mobile, so you you know it's gonna be good. I'll link his recent video down below in the description in case you wanna check that out for some more info. What do you say we jump into it? All right, so the tool we're building today is very easy to put together and it costs about $100. And I've linked all the individual parts down below in the description for anyone wanting to build one themselves. And what I'm trying to accomplish with this tool is test how much air is leaking through these closed valves. It's kind of like a leak down test, except you're able to test individual ports instead of the entire cylinder. In fact, you're kind of able to test individual valves, which I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, the heart of this thing, the most important part is the vacuum pump. Pump. And you basically want to get the crappiest, cheapest vacuum pump you can possibly buy with the lowest CFM. See, if you get a pump that can move too much air, it becomes harder to detect small leaks. So I used a three and a half CFM pump here, and it seemed to work pretty well. In Jaffro's video, he says the dual stage vacuum pumps that move seven to eight CFM are simply too powerful for this job. Next, you'll want something like this compound meter, which can measure both pressure and vacuum. And this thing actually has a lot of uses on a car in general. So it's a great tool to have around. This is just an inline shutoff valve that allows you to stop the vacuum source going to a port during the test. And I'll show you why that's important later. Now, since these vacuum pumps are typically used to evacuate air conditioning systems, they usually have these air conditioning line type connections on them. So you can get one of these cheap hoses that already has that female AC connection and it just makes it really easy to hook up to this thing. You also want this foam padding, anything that can seal air basically, and you can either glue this to the tool or like I did here, I just found an adhesive backed version so I don't have to use glue. And then you'll need some sort of rigid plate material. This could be either aluminum, steel, plastic, plexiglass, anything. I went with this, it's called expanded PVC because it's super easy to cut and drill and work with. And those are all the parts you need to build this tool. So let's get to work. I'm gonna start by measuring the distance in between the studs on the head because I'll have to cut out a plate that can fit in between those. And this stuff is so soft, I'm pretty sure I could cut it with a butter knife, which is why I love using it for a project like this. Just very easy to work with. After that's cut out and you verify that it fits in between the studs, you need to cut out a piece of your foam that's the same size. But before you attach those two parts, you will need to drill and tap your plate for one of the fittings. If you get this same vacuum test gauge that I got, it'll come with the fitting you need. I just used the right size fitting that matched the hose size of the vacuum tester. And I probably went a little overkill here going with the thread sealant on NPT threads going into a soft material, but I really didn't want this fitting to leak. Once you get the fitting secured in there, you need to mark on the foam where the fitting is and then drill a hole through the foam, preferably not through your hand. And now you can either glue or stick those parts together. And look at that, you've created your very own vacuum tester pad. Now I've seen sets of these things for sale for like a hundred dollars which is totally outrageous because I think this whole thing was probably two dollars to make. We're gonna build our entire tool for under a hundred dollars. All right it's time to make a little sacrifice in the form of our AC line. Now most of these things are gonna have two different ends on them. One of them will be just completely open and the other one will have a valve depressor inside of it. Go ahead and hack off the one with that valve depressing piece because you will not be needing that. At this point everything is ready for assembly so starting from the vacuum pump you'll hook up your AC line, then you hook up the shutoff valve, and then after that you're going to T 
key in the vacuum gauge, and then after that you'll go to your vacuum test pad. Little word of caution with this pump, you do need to remove the exhaust cap and you also need to fill it with oil. If you look into the sight glass when you first pull this thing out of the box, it looks like it has some oil in it, but it does not. And it includes the compressor oil, so you do have to fill that thing up. And another thing, I don't, I don't know if it's really supposed to do this. Remember how I said you need to buy the cheapest vacuum pump possible? I don't know if they all do this, but you definitely wanna be using this thing in a well-ventilated area. By now, I'm sure many of you already know how to hook this thing up and how it works, but I'm gonna give it a little demo for you. So you will need both of the valves installed for whichever port you're testing, and you have to have the valve stem seals installed. I made that mistake the first time around. So just go ahead and put the vacuum test pad onto your port and turn the machine on and watch the gauge. Here I've got all my exhaust valves installed and I can rapid test each one of these ports and see how much vacuum the pump is pulling. Now I'm not gonna do a bunch of extensive testing in this video. I'm gonna save that for when I actually lap the valves so I can show the difference before and after and what, if I can find any good valves, bad valves, etc. But on the quick test, let's just see how these things turn out. I'm expecting that they're all gonna be pretty healthy because I didn't have any problems with the exhaust valves on this head. The major issues were with the intake valves. So on the first port, we're pulling about 23 inches of vacuum. Okay, I don't really have a frame of reference yet, but maybe that's good. Okay, second port pulling like 26 inches of vacuum. So that one appears to be sealing better. The third one here, about the same, about 26, 27 inches of vacuum. So good seal on that one too. And on the fourth port, about the same, 26 or 27 inches. So looks like just that first port I tested leaks a little bit more than the others. And good thing I'll be lapping the valves. So I'll be able to test out if I'm actually getting a better seal. And to me, this tool is really invaluable because I can give a good thorough testing to each valve before I spend all that time putting the engine back together because I want this thing to make some serious horsepower and valve sealing is extremely important for that. Now, some of my astute followers might be saying, but Craig, one port leads to two valves. So how can you tell if one valve is leaking over the other one? Well, it's pretty easy. It's the same concept as a wet compression test. I'm running the tester here here on my worst performing port. And as you can see, when I pour oil onto one of the valves, the vacuum raises, which means it's creating a better seal. When I pour oil onto the second valve, the vacuum raises once again. So in this case, it looks like the valves are leaking about equal amounts, but I'd be willing to bet if I were to lap in one of those valves and then do that wet test on it, the vacuum would not raise because the valve would be sealing correctly. And I'm gonna do all that in my DI DIY valve lapping video, but that's just conceptually so you can understand the test here. All right, so the reason I wanted to install the inline shutoff valve is number one, you can just let the pump keep running and it makes it easy to switch between ports because it is actually pretty hard to pull this thing off the port. This thing, this thing does a pretty serious suck. But another reason for this valve is when you're running the vacuum on this port, you can see the peak vacuum, but if you shut off the valve during the test, you can also time how how long it takes for that vacuum to subside. The faster that needle drops, the more air that's leaking through those valves. So if I do a little split screen demonstration here between a port that tested with very high vacuum and my worst performing port, you can see as soon as I shut off the vacuum source, it's very clear to see based on how fast that needle's dropping on the bad port, how much more quickly those valves are letting air leak past. If I pause the video right here at about 1.3 seconds, you can see how much faster the air is leaking through the valves back into the bad port compared to the good one. And this is also good data to keep on top of the peak vacuum values if you're planning on lapping the valves yourself. Man, I'm stoked on how well that thing works. So many times I've looked things up on the internet, tried to replicate them myself, and it's like a total flop. So this thing, super easy to use, only like just over $100 to build, and I think it's a pretty cool and unique tool. I had no idea this even existed before I saw Jaffro's video, which is a brand new video from him. So yeah, I'm, I'm just pumped all around. Hit that subscribe button if you're new, of course, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Okay, I was just editing this video and I realized something pretty epic. Technically, you wouldn't even have to remove the cylinder head to be able to at least test your valves. Check this out. Now obviously you would have to remove the intake or the exhaust manifold for whichever valves you want to test, but as long as the valves were closed on the cylinder you're testing, you should just be able to let it rip. Look at that. That's even better results than on the VVT head. 
And some people will say, well, it's basically the same as just doing a leak down test, right? But it's not because a leak down test goes through the spark plug hole and it tests the intake valves and the exhaust valve simultaneously as well as the piston rings. So this is more of an isolated test. Whether this test would be useful to you or not, you'll have to make that decision, but I just wanted to throw that information in there. And keep in mind, you will need to know which valves are open and closed. Say you're gonna test the exhaust valves on a cylinder, if you accidentally have the engine at a point where the exhaust valves are open and the intake valves are closed, you're sort of testing the intake valves and the piston ring seal because you have the thing on the port and the valves are open and you're testing everything that's inside that cylinder. So you have to make sure the valves are actually closed on the port you're testing. But if you have the manifold off, that's very easy to tell. You just look inside the port and make sure the valves aren't open. And you also have to have the spark plugs out because if a valve is leaking, it's gotta have air to leak so you can measure the thing that's leaking, if that makes sense. So anyways, I hope this video was useful to someone out there. If you guys end up building this tool, throw it up on Instagram, make sure to tag me on it so I can check it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.